So here we're going to talk about the stock round, which is where players do actions in 18WE. The stock round is when players manage their portfolio. They can buy and sell stock. They can nominate majors, minors, concessions, and or private companies to be started by auction. That's assuming you're playing with minors and privates, by the way. And you can pass when you're out of actions that you want to take. During a stock round, the number of certificates that you can hold in your hand is limited. That limit is based on the number of players. You can see that up here in the scenario section of the board. The more players you have, the lower the certificate limit gets. So what counts as a certificate? Any share of a major or minor company. Notice that 30% director shares count as one certificate. Also, a minor company, even though you don't have a stock certificate for it, still counts as a share if you're playing with minor companies. If you're at your certificate limit, there is no buying stock, no nominating new companies, and no participation in auctions for major or minor companies because you don't have room for the next certificate. If you go over your certificate limit, you'll have to sell stock at your next available opportunity. That's not true if you've reached the late game, but otherwise it's enforceable in the rest of the game. Remember, neither privates nor concessions count against this limit. You can participate in nominations and auctions for those two things. In stock round order, each player is going to be taking an action or passing. If they pass, they'll take a turn order card, which may result in them moving up in the order. The person that passes first will go first in the next stock round. The person who passes second will go second in the next stock round, etc. So sometimes... If you don't have anything to do, it's better to just pass and improve your position for next time. So when you're taking a stock round action, first you can sell an unlimited number of shares. You can see the bank pool is over here. Now, unlike many 18 XS games, there is no limit on the number of shares of the bank pool. So if you decide you don't want a company anymore, you can just dump the entire thing into the bank pool. However, you can only sell shares that you bought in previous stock rounds. Once you've done all of your selling, then you can do one of three things. You can either buy one share of an available company that is not reserved, or when you set up the game, you're going to put out licenses on the board according to what scenario you're playing. We're just going to use the primary major start here as an example. You can see that it puts licenses onto the board, and those are the companies that you can nominate. So you'd be picking either a major or minor company. So you'd be picking one of these nine companies in this particular case to nominate for auction. You may nominate a concession for auction, which are the green pieces of paper over here, or you might have some leftover privates if you're playing with private companies that have gone to the bank pool that are available to be put up for auction. Because any leftover private companies can be put up in later stock rounds for auction. If you're playing with minor companies, you can integrate a minor company into a major company that you control. That just requires having an available share, and then all the assets that you desire for the minor go into that major company. So those are the three things that you can do. Finally, just remember that you have to have the certificate space for major or minor companies. Once you're actually in the stock round, anything new is auctioned. Major companies, minor companies, private companies, and concessions are all auctioned off. When you're actually performing an auction, the minimum bid is zero. Bids are in increments of five, and if you pass, you're out of the auction and you may not re-enter. If you win the auction, then you get whatever you're bidding on, of course. Bids on major companies, private companies, and concessions are lost. Minor companies are the only thing where they get the full bid money if you're playing with them. Regardless of who wins the auction, it will be the next player's turn. Nominating a major, minor, concession, or private, that is your action. Regardless of whether you win it or not, play moves on to the next player. Let's say you've won an auction for a major company. You get to decide both whether it's a chartered company or a non-chartered company, as well as its par value. Are you going to float it chartered or unchartered? So let's explain the difference between the two. 
If you take a look at the board up here, there's different areas of the PAR board for chartered companies and non-chartered. And the text there tells you what the differences are. The chartered companies, their full capitalization with unchartered companies, their partial capitalization. You still have to buy 50% of the stock regardless to get it to float. Charter companies are required to buy six station markers total for 120 francs, and non-charter companies get their choice of 2 to 12 tokens at a cost of 20 each. So for chartered companies, you can see this blue highlighted box. These are the available par values. For a non-chartered company, the range is much wider but has some limitations based on the number of companies that have been floated throughout the game. If you're playing with minor companies, every five count as one major. So you've won a major company in auction. First thing you have to do is that you must buy the director's certificate. You're going to pay three times the par value for that share. You may buy up to 50% immediately. If you're doing that, then you're going to be paying five times the par value. So let's say you started a company at 90. That would be 270 for the director's certificate, or it would be 450 if you went up to 50%. So finally, once you've floated your company, you get to reserve one share. It's only available for purchase with the director's permission. On the IPO board up here, I've done the math for you. This is what it costs to buy five shares of a chartered company. This is the capital that they will receive. Notice that the 120 francs for station markers has been taken out. For non-chartered, they're funded with each share that is purchased as they are purchased. And they're only ever purchased at stock rate value. The upside is that the shares in the company pay to the company. After you've floated a company, you may reserve one share. Note that you don't have to decide the number of tokens for a non-chartered company until the end of the stock round. And then the decision is made in reverse stock price order, low to high. Another difference between chartered and unchartered companies is that chartered companies you buy at the par value. Their unsold stock does not go down in value. Whereas with unchartered companies, their stock price is only purchased at market value. With chartered companies, their remaining shares will be in the IPO. And non-chartered companies, their shares will be in the treasury. Which, incidentally, once a company starts generating revenue, those shares will pay to the company and build up money in the treasury, assuming that nobody else buys them. So let's go through an example. We've done the setup. I'm going first, and I want to start a company here in the southeast because I like their warranties. So maybe I like the freight company here in Praha. So I put this up for auction, and I win it for 20, which means it's a major company. I'm paying 20 to the bank. I get no compensation for that. That money is just lost. Now I have a decision about where to float that, how much I want to float it. That is the KNFB. Let's say I started at 58, because that's a typical starting number. So I started at 58, and I'm going to do it as a chartered company. I look over here. I've done the math for you. That means it's going to have 460 francs to play with. It costs me 290 francs to float that company. So once I've made that decision about what the par price is, I come over here and I put a token here so everybody knows what price those shares are going to be in the IPO. I take the KNFB charter, put a station immediately there. Now, it is a chartered company, so that means it's going to have six tokens. So let me do that. So I've got five on my charter, and I've got, just to show you the, the math explicitly here, the KNFB starts with 580 francs, and then it's spent 120 on stations, if I'm starting it as a chartered company. And I'm going to buy five of those shares. And in this case, the remaining shares would be available in the IPO. You could just put them on the stock market. Let's say I wanted to start the KNFB as a non-chartered company. Then I would get my choice of 2 to 12 tokens here. 
So maybe I only want four tokens to start with. Maybe par it higher, 82. So I would put the canopy up here at 82. 82 times five, because I have to buy five shares to float it, is 410 francs. So I take the money that I spend from my stock, I put it into the company, then I will buy stations at the end of the stock round. I'm going to charge myself 80, the 80 bucks for those stations, just so you can see where the money sits. When you float a company, go ahead and take the randomizer and the license. So that way you know the KNFB is now a freight company. Now note, if I hadn't put the KNFB up for auction, uh, somebody else did, and I won it, it's kind of like a free stock route action. Now in that example, I didn't do a minor integration, so let's show you how that works. Let's say I have this company here, and I'm starting the MAV. I've won the auction in the stock round for the, the MAV here. So this counts as a certificate. Let's say I float this for 90. In order to float the company, I need to get up to 50% of the stock. But this miner is worth one certificate. So I only really have to buy four certificates, which means... I'm going to invest 360 francs in this company, and I'm going to take 40% of the company while I'm floating it. So that looks like that. So let's say that this company has train and some money. If I do the minor integration, I'm going to get an additional share for this company. And then everything that this miner has that I want, I take and I put into the MAV. I take the train at its current warranty level, I take the freight license, and I take the 10 bucks. Now this has 50% in my hand, in player hands, so it is floated, and it will operate in the next operation round after the stock round. I replace the miner station with the MAV station. Now, if there was another A station for minor A up there, I would take that as well if I wanted it. I can also take the MAV home here because the MAV started here. And I can take that station and put it on the board if I wish to do so. And if I don't want it, I can just leave it behind. Notice that the MAV here did come with its own express license. So once I've integrated that miner, the MAV came with the license itself, and then it got an additional license with the miner as well. So that's how miner integration works. You can see that the late game is triggered when a company hits a stock price of 700. Once that happens in the next stock round, there will be no sales required if anybody is over the limit and there's no floating new companies. In addition, sales have no effect on the stock price. If there were any shares in the IPO at this point, they drop to the bank pool, and so you're no longer buying stock at par. At the end of the stock round, three things happen. Number one, unchartered companies buy stations, reverse stock price order, low to high, Next, players may change order for the next stock round based on when they passed. Finally, you check for a second operating round if you had more than 10 companies floated. Remember, every five active miners count as one, then you get a second operating round. So that's basically everything you need to know about 18WE stock rounds. There'll be another video coming on operation rounds, and I look forward to seeing what you folks think about that. Take care and enjoy. If you like the game and you're curious about my other work, please do check out Rocking Change, changing the world through changing ourselves. Thank you.